Hi everybody, Dan Ullman here with special coverage of the All Stakes Pick 4 at Laurel Park on Saturday. The sequence races 7 through 10 on this 11 race card and this sequence is going to be fluid up until scratch time. Not only do we have expected wet weather at Laurel that might impact uh, the participation of several of these runners. A couple of these horses also cross entered in a few races. And we also have a quarantine situation, some late breaking news in New York that might affect horses that are expected to ship down from New York to participate in this race. So as always, wait for scratch time, but here's hoping that this very good sequence stays intact. And we'll begin with race number seven, the $100,000 Maryland Racing Media, approximate post time of 3.30 Eastern. And we'll take a look at my Ticket Maker play. And you might want to use Ticket Maker where you weigh your options, more weight, more investment on your A plays, but you also have saver plays with the B. Uh, Bishop's Pond, five to two. She is one of those horses cross-centered in the Barbara Fritchie later in the sequence. But if she runs in the Maryland Racing Media, she's going to be the favorite and she's going to be the controlling speed from the inside. In her last three dirt starts she has two blowout wins and the loss came when she was completely overmatched behind a late in the grade one Bell Dame. That being said, and even though she beat three of these horses in her most recent start, the 38 go-go stakes, I have to admit I've never really trusted Bishop's Pond completely. I'm a little bit more interested actually in the nine Fellini. And if you look at Fellini's form, she doesn't really have that winning profile, four seconds from 13 starts. And if you just watch the video and don't take into account everything that was going on at Aqueduct on January the 26th, you'd be disappointed. Fellini is the odds on favorite, took the lead from pace setter Smile Big on the turn, opened up in the stretch, and then blew that lead. It looked like a bad loss. But then when you watch all the races at Aqueduct that day, there was a pronounced inside bias, and Smile Big rode that gold rail, and I think that contributed to Fellini's defeat more than anything else. Also, Fellini, I think, is really going to appreciate getting out around two turns, and a wet track wouldn't be the problem as well. She won her uh, most recent start over Sloppy Going by 18 and a half lengths at Parks. I think Fellini is very dangerous from just off of the pace. My backup in here is the number five, and that's Sky Flower, who's coming out of the Nelly more stakes at Laurel at this distance. That was her most recent start. And in that race, the widest and last move was the best move. And while Sky Flower was sitting third uh, on the outside three wide, she made the first move into the teeth of the pace turning into the stretch and closers were able to swamp her in the final 16th of a mile. I think Sky Flower moved a little bit too soon against the grain of the track that day. She is another one that has run well in a wet track and she'll be a very good price. We'll throw up the ticket maker now for the second leg of this all stakes pick four, race number eight with an approximate post time of four o'clock. It's the $100,000 wide country stakes. I think the number seven last true love is going to be very dangerous in here. I liked her performance last time out in the Marshua Stakes on January the 27th. That race earned her a 74 buyer speed figure, the best last buyer speed figure in this race. And she ended up down on the inside at the very end of that race. And I think the outside was the place to be at Laurel on January the 27th. Last True Love is a comfortable outside post with a good amount of early speed. She'll be very prominent turning into the stretch. Well, the number four Fool's Gold is very light on buyer speed figures. Her last two numbers of 59 would not make a dent in this race. It's worth saying that Chad Brown is shipping her down to run in this spot. Fool's Gold, a very nicely bred daughter of Medallia Doro, she blew away a field of maidens. And while it was a weak field, it was that day, January 26th, where the inside was gold. And Fool's Gold came with an outside bid and was simply better than those horses. I think she's got a little bit of upside. My Bs are the two Deep Red and the three Enchanted Ghost. I'm not sure if Deep Red is good enough to compete in this field, but she's coming off a solid enough win at five and a half furlongs. And she was second at a big price at this distance, two starts back in the Maryland Juvenile Philly Championship. She's another horse that can be forward. Enchanted Ghost is stretching out from six to seven, and I think that's actually what she wants. Her most recent win came at a one-turn mile. Race number nine is the third leg of this all-stakes pick four. It's the grade three General George Stakes, and you can access a full stakes preview at video.drf.com or the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel, uh, where Daily Racing Form handicapper Mike Beer and I go over each horse in great detail. From a pick four standpoint, we'll throw up my ticket maker ticket for the third leg. The two is awesome banner. An awesome banner woke up in his most recent start, the fire plug stakes at Laurel on January the 20th. After two woeful efforts that had a lot of people wondering about Awesome Banner's overall farm, Awesome Banner was able to show good speed. He reeled in the even money favor turning into the stretch, and he held off a couple of other closers. I think he gets a very similar pace scenario in here. The one Cowboy Miz is going to go. Awesome Banner should be sitting second, and he might be able to take this thing over turning into the stretch. My other A in here is the number nine, Great Stuff, and I debated 
affiliated with are making great stuff a B, but I ultimately put him in as an A. Last time out, he just had a picture-perfect scenario in the grade three toboggan stakes, a wicked speed duel. Great stuff sat near the back of the pack, and he took advantage when the pace collapsed. That being said, his race at Laurel two starts back was the exact opposite. There was no pace whatsoever, or at least there was no closing going on, except for Great Stuff, who was running at the end, passed a lot of horses and finished third. Great Stuff is in very good form for David Jacobson. I'm hoping he gets enough pace. Do share the number 10 is my B. This horse has won his last three starts on dirt and five out of his last six starts on the main track. He's another horse that took advantage of a really really positive situation last time in the Gravesend Stakes over a wet track. Belinda Rice does such great work. It's hard to hard to deny do share a place on this ticket. The final leg of this all stakes pick four is the DRF Bet Saturday race of the day. The grade two Barbara Fritchie Stakes. Uh, and you can access free formulator pass performances for that race on the race of the day event page on DRF.com. Here's my completed ticket maker ticket with some opinions for the Barbara Fritchie pre scratches and program changes. Divine Miss Gray is in razor sharp form for trainer Danny Gargan. She's won her last two races and she figures to be forward along with the number nine Miss Locust Point. And I'm not sure there's going to be a ton of pace in this year's Barbara Fritchie. So I want those two pace horses. Hopefully they won't compromise each other. I want those two pace horses as my main A. Divine Miss Gray has the ability to lead, the ability to rate. It's really up to how they want to ride Miss Locust Point. But she won last time I'd very comfortably putting away two pace horses and then finishing off Bull, the number two, who I did not use on my ticket. Miss Locust Point has won five out of her last six starts, her last three. She still has yet to crack a 90 on the buyer scale, but she's so lightly raced that I think she has another forward move in her. And she, like the number one, is going to be extremely prominent turning into the stretch. She pounded a field last time out in the What a Summer Stakes. The jockey never really had to ask her for run, but this is a tougher spot. Kazan, the number 10. Boy, Bob Rabato has done a fantastic job with this New York bred six-year-old. She's won her last two races, and just watching her, she just seems so comfortable right now she would also appreciate a little bit of moisture in the track she's four for seven and she's not a horse that's going to be pace compromised at all she can sit third or fourth if the pace is moderate she's too too dangerous to ignore completely burned the number six she might be one more of a one run closer she came from well back last actually to win the safely kept stakes in her most recent start one turn racing is what she wants she'll get that on Saturday the question is whether she'll get enough of a pace uh, for her to impact in the late stages. What a fun sequence, races seven through 10. Hopefully there won't be too many scratches. We'll begin with a $100,000 Maryland Racing Media Stakes with an approximate post time of 3.30 Eastern. Best of luck.